folks. I'm Angela from Angela's Crystal Corner, and I am here for Edgar Casey's ARE. And looking forward to talking to you about crystals. We've been talking for a few months now, and we're just going to continue our discussions. And I'll let you know a little bit about you know kind of how it is, how we look at it here. Um, of course, I'm here for Edgar Casey, and I will always do a reading of his. Uh, he was a famous psychic who was very um, humble farmer. And he would do readings from kind of a meditative state where he didn't really know what he was saying. So it's a lot of information to be gathered from those. And you can find them in the Edgar Casey Center in Virginia Beach. I'm in Tidewater. And you can reach out to me to uh, visit, purchase crystals, or get a consultation. Uh, my email is listed. And I will try to answer your questions during the program. If I can't, I'll get them afterwards. Please uh, say something so we know you're here. I can't always see the feed, so sometimes I miss things. There are people, so uh, I welcome you all. I'm so glad to have you here. This is my passion, and it's fun for me. So um, we try to make it an open forum. There's many people out there that will tell you different things about crystals. Uh, and I would say just take what you like and leave the rest, including uh, anything I say. Um, I don't know everything about crystals, but I love them and uh, enjoy talking about them and sharing things I've learned over the years. So uh, with each reading or show, we're going to do a reading from Edgar Casey, and then I will focus on a particular crystal tonight at Smoky Quartz. And we'll continue our discussion on cleansing and programming crystals and what you can do with them. Hi, Lisa, Zena, Stephanie. I'm seeing some of the feed. Uh, anyhow, let's start with the reading. I was looking through uh, his book. Uh, well, actually, it's a book on gems and stones, an old book that kind of gives you uh, some of his perspective. Most of Edgar Cayce's perspective that I see is based on vibration and vibrational healing. Everything has vibration and stones certainly do, um, but this is about the intended uses of uh, um, crystals. And what it says is, for as is understood by the entity, all creation is a manifestation of that creative influence or force called God. And these elements and stones bring such to this body, for they are part of the evolution of vibration, as may be seen from the entity's development through the earth, earthly sojourns as well as through the astrological sojourns that have been a part of the entity's experience. Thus, as these elements are part of its creations, so may they bring those helpful vibrations about the entity. So it's all about vibration. And if you will, uh, when, you're, when you're looking at stones, I kind of look at them like people. Like, you know, your stone, Catherine, Victoria, Zanine Hill, Nina, Mary, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, I look at stones, I think people are drawn to the vibrations they either need to help heal them or that they're, that, that they're similar with. And that's what the purpose of the stones are. If they have a vibration and you work with them or touch them, uh, you, you, your, your vibration kind of starts to match the stone. That's what the that's what they say anyway. Again, you're open. We're open here. I don't care what spirit spirituality you are or what you think about stones necessarily. Of course, I'm I'm trying to tell you about Edgar Casey's view of it, which is my view of it too. So uh, it is a little bit um, of the spirit side of things. Uh, so tonight, with that being said, I wanted to do smoky quartz, and I'm going to show you some beautiful crystals um, and. Then we'll go over some more cleansing because I got some questions I wanted to answer last time. Um, so I'll start with an interesting piece, uh, which is this is a, a smoky quartz on matrix, as they call it. If somebody says on matrix, it's the, it, the stone is on the original piece of material it's found on. Of course, it's another mineral or stone, but uh, generally it's not a, a gemstone that's grown out of that. It, it, the gemstone grew out of it, but the piece is is usually something a little bit rougher. This one is interesting because I got it from a guy on Facebook after he just mined it and pulled it out of the earth. So only two people have touched this, him and me, which I think is pretty cool. And so I probably won't ever get rid of that one just because of that. And I know I told you guys before about a smoky that I had that I thought was kind of negative energy. I don't have much of that, but I thought it was negative. So I buried it in the ground outside and it turned lighter energy and lighter color too. So I pulled that one to show you. And this is the, this piece. This is probably one of the first pieces I got on Facebook. I get a lot of my stones on Facebook. I have a lot of friends that sell and variety of stones. 
But this one was very dark color when I got it. And in a way of cleansing, you can put it in the earth, Mother Earth. That's where they come from. So I buried it for about six months, and it came out lighter and didn't feel dark to me anymore. Some people would suggest you throw away a stone if it has dark energy. I just don't believe that the energy is going to attach to stone forever, especially if you cleanse it properly. Um, so here's another one kind of similar to that. It's a more darker smoky quartz, but it's got a little, a little another growth on there, which I love when they have these. They're, to me, they're more, you know, special that way. It's, if that's like a tabular growth. Um, and then you have your lighter smoky pieces. This is polished quartz. It's, you know, shaped and polished by, usually Brazilians do this, this type of work. They shape the stone and polish it. You can tell a Brazilian because it'll have a beveled edge on the bottom. I almost always know that they, they particularly do the bottoms like that. Uh, some of them you'll find are not so nice on the bottom, and they're usually from another country somewhere. Um, I was going to tell you about smoky quartz, too. A lot of it is mined in the United States. If you go to look at um, an old show called Prospectors from the, the Weather Channel, which I used to watch all the time, you can watch people pulling these stones out of the earth and what they have to do to get them. Some of they use explosives sometimes, but there is a, 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 a location there or a claim. They call it a claim when someone finds stones. I don't know the exact legal thing that they do, but they claim it as theirs. And the government allows them to get the stones out of that location. But the, the, the Smokies that you see in, in Colorado come with Amazonite often. This is Amazonite. We'll talk about Amazonite another time, but it's found with smoky quartz a lot, especially in the United States, in Colorado. So, and this is from that claim on the Weather Channel, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, okay, here's a Brazilian cluster. Now, I showed you this is a polished stone, and this, this doesn't matter what somebody's done to it. I think they're beautiful because I like shiny things. I always have. I think that's why I got into being interested in stones. But this is a cluster. This is a Brazilian cluster. This is how it's found. It's pulled out like that. So they do form, they form as beautiful pieces themselves. But usually you will have, you know, the larger pieces like I just showed you as a polished piece. These are shiny anyway, and they're beautiful. Um, and let's see. Okay. This, I love this kind of formulation. We call it a candle because it has so many other pieces with it. This, of course, sits by itself, but I think they're pretty powerful pieces. Um, and you'll find some smoky that's very, very dark, like this one. It's almost black, but it's still a smoky. It's still a smoky. And this is a double terminated point, which is known to be a little more powerful. Um, let's see. Okay. This is a smoky sphere. And I was going to show you something cool that I do a lot. Candle holders are excellent sphere holders. And they're cool. Because this is, this is a, a clear quartz. And I know it doesn't look clear. Some quartz is found very milky, especially clear, especially the clear or white quartz we find here in the United States. But those two just go together, right? I think they're really cool. So um, let's see, I have some. This is a partially polished piece, and it's raw on the bottom. But the top's polished. It's pretty cool. And I have a tear-shaped one with lots of rainbows and lots of glassy pieces. And those, that's natural for quartz. It's going to have some included looks sometimes it will have inclusions um another teardrop with naturally the natural piece right down there you can see that's kind of part of the inclusion it kind of shows you what is in there sometimes behind them when you see that i'm not a master of this camera yet but i'm trying um and i pulled this one because it's an unusual polish to it i got this one at a gym show <sighs> a large polished piece and I don't know if you can see this, but there, there's black tourmaline in there. There's pieces of little shards of black tourmaline. And a lot of times you'll see things that are crystals that are inclusions or they're found that way after they're pulled out. And it's good that it's with black tourmaline because they're both very protective stones. And a lot of times people use them together. Um, so that's pretty much most of the, the smoky quartz that I wanted to show you, but I wanted to go on and give you a little bit more information on the cleansing. And again, sorry for the technical difficulties. I don't know what happened, but I finally found a way back in. So uh, we showed you a little bit about saging and, and talked a little bit about that. And that is, I pulled a little piece from a big piece of 
of uh, smudge kit because you don't need that much to light up and get some smoke going and smoke around the house. I kind of told you how to do it, but I had some questions because I didn't, you know, I skipped around a little bit. Um, generally, when you're staging your home or, or other things, you don't have to pick everything up to do this. Um, it's your intention that counts. Your intention is to cleanse and you're walking around asking for the light to come in and the darkness to leave. Sometimes if it's a brand new crystal, I might pick it up and, and have the smoke going and, you know, and do that, but you don't have to. I just smoke every room and I, I put the smoke around the crystals in the room a little bit. And it's, uh, it, it cleanses the stones, it cleanses your house. Sage is known to actually kill bacteria. It says it kills a large percentage, like 98 or 99% of it. I like the way it smells. It does smell a little bit like marijuana. You'll notice that, but it does go out pretty quickly. You want to have a window open when you're doing this. I've explained before that negative energy attaches to smoke. It's got to be able to escape somehow. And another thing on cleansing that I've been doing over, uh, over there, our visits is my tuning fork that's tuned to quartz. And I'm, I want to do it on this big one because I haven't done it before on this one. So I want to see what it does. Tuning fork is a way to cleanse. If you get a tune out of quartz and it's tuned to quartz, and you hear it, it's cleansing the quartz, but it's also raising our vibration and cleansing the room. So we'll just see if we can do this. It's not too loud. It must not be too dirty. Oh, well, here we go. There we go. Yeah. It's cleansing it and us, which is always good for us, right? So. Um, what I was going to talk about as well is what to do with crystals. You know, we're, we're trying to pick them that match our vibration or feel good to us. And we want to fix things. And, I, you know, I've explained that they don't, they don't immediately fix something. If you're sick, they're not going to immediately make you better. They will give you a vibration of wellness and being calm or peaceful type of thing. There are also stones that are good for addiction, like amethyst. But what you're doing is you're trying to align yourself with this vibration. And so you, you pick a stone that feels good to you. And, and there are many things you can do. You can wear them. Like I have a smoky on tonight. There's a smoky ring. That's really how I got started is wearing these beautiful stones and figuring out what is that for? What is it good for? So I started looking them up. And you will have people tell you many things about certain crystals and books will tell you different things about them. But the smoky quartz that I didn't get to tell you about because I got interrupted a little bit is a very calm stone. It's very protective. It helps you manifest the spiritual to your life. And it's a stone that I actually can sleep with. I've explained to you guys in my room, I try to keep stones in there that are calmer, that, you know, don't get too excited because they do get a little excited. And smoky is very peaceful. It's kind of an underrated stone, I think, because it's it's just quiet, but it's very strong. It protects against negative and dark forces, so to speak. And I like to have a lot of those kinds of stones around. So another thing you can do with a stone, aside from wearing it and, and, and understanding what it's helping you with, um, is to uh, meditate with them. Um, I pick smaller stones for that, like, like this a little teardrop, which is polished, Brazilian polish, and you hold them in your hands. And here's the thing, to program a stone. Once you've cleansed them, because they do absorb negative energy, some don't, a, a few of them don't. But let's just, you know, we'll talk about this because a smoky would absorb negative energy. Um, and you want, that's why you want to cleanse them. You, you want them clean, of course. And I just use a Norwex polishing cloth to cleanse mine and to, to actually polish them if I want to clean them a little bit. Um, you can use a damp cloth. And I've kind of warned you too that you don't want to put you don't want water on certain stones because it'll it'll damage them, but damp is okay. But you want to cleanse your crystals when you think they've absorbed negative energy. If I have a few people in the house that I maybe if I don't know them or they're not you know it's not clear to me, I will cleanse the house and hopefully the whole thing. Um, so you, when you're working with stones and you're talking about intention or programming, I don't like the word programming. It just sounds too formal or like something that's not natural exactly. But if you your intention is what's important with anything and everything, right? It's your intention. That that's if you want to cleanse your house, it's your intention. You don't have to be perfect. This is not a perfect world. You just get your desires out there and assume that God is working in your in your best half and your best interest. So let's just say we want to program this with something or we want it to do something for us. Um, I would say I know it's a protective stone. So I would probably ask it to help me be calm and protect me from whatever's going on with the day. Um, and 
basically you're setting your intention. There's nothing, you know, too difficult about this and there's nothing really, you know, scientific to prove it. Of course, we're not talking about really provable things, but I do know I feel vibrations on stones and I've, I've watched them calm people. Um, and, and Smokey does that for me. I, I, it just, it is very calming to me. It may not be to somebody else, but um, I might meditate with it. I might set an intention and set it around and hope that it's assisting me. And I've kind of guided you with that. I call them assisters. They don't, they're not perfect. They don't immediately do something, but they help you get a vibration that you like. And that can help heal you. And for me, I have migraines a lot. So I tend to pick calmer stones that help my vibration lower down because I think if you're not calm, it makes a migraine worse and it can actually, you know, initiate one. So another thing I was going to tell you about, um, you can meditate with them. You can set an intention, which is a program. I don't like that word, but you set your intention of what you want them to do. And they generally cooperate, in my opinion, um, because I have so many in my house that they're vibrationally could rock the foundation off. And I always ask them, just be good, be calm, because this is a good place. Nobody's going to hurt you here, and you can, you can just do your work like you want to. And I, I, I don't give them too many rules. But I did talk to you about grids. I mentioned crystal grids. A lot of people use grids. A grid is a way to set up a crystal or crystals on a table or on any space, actually. And you set an intention with them, and you pick the crystals that, that you think can, can do this for you. Um, I don't do much of this. I just have so many that I feel like they're working in my best interest. And I, you know, I don't just, this, this is not something I do, but a lot of people do. So I wanted to show you a basic, this is a basic um, grid. This book is called Crystals for Healing. And I've told many people, because they'll ask me what the best book is. There's so many books. It's hard to tell you what the best one is. I have a few that I go to. I love um, the Edgar Casey book because I'm, you know, understanding his esoteric, not esoteric, but you know, his spiritual vibration that he gets when he's doing his readings. I want to know what he's, what he's talking about. So I, I, that's my favorite book. But there's so many, get what you like and take the rest. You know, leave the rest. I'm sorry, not leave the rest. Take what you like and leave the rest. So I usually go on Amazon and look and look at the reviews and try to figure out if it's got the information I want. Like if I'm looking for the basics on mining or local mining, then I know I'm looking at that. If I want to learn how to do grids, I might look up grids. But this is a basic grid for prosperity. And what it is showing is a citrine in the middle, a natural citrine, uh, surrounded by clear quartz. And you're not going to find identical pieces usually. So don't worry about perfection here at all. But let's just say you want to, your intention to be prosperity out there. So you're going to get a citrine and put it in the middle, probably bigger than the others. And you're going to be symmetric. It's kind of like a Mandela, which is another form of energy that people use, you know, uh, one of my friends makes them, a beautiful Kathy Rose, she's a wonderful astrologer locally, and she does a lot of art with mandalas. I think a, a, a grid is, a, is similar to a mandala in that you're trying to have it be kind of equal, but you're not going to find equal stones usually, but you put them out in equal space, and you set them there, and you set your intention, and in my opinion, it doesn't matter where you put them. You could be in the living room or in the kitchen, you know, wherever you want them, but it's just the basics of, of setting up some uses for, for crystals. Um, for me, I just enjoy looking at them and touching them and, and, and meditating with them and wearing them. That's kind of what I do. But you're, you can feel free to do whatever you want to with them. I mean, they just they help uh, in so many levels to me. Uh, and it's a very gentle uh, healing thing. It's not, it's not a sudden thing. You can't take them. You don't have a pill that you're taking with a crystal. But at any rate, um, that is all on the smoky quartz and, and, and some intention setting. And um, I wanted to do, I want to do a, a crystal card for you. I'm trying to make sure I've gotten everything I wanted to talk about. I got interrupted and it made me a little bit lost for a second. Um, cleansing program assistance, protection, clear, okay. Some other things that you're looking at, you know, if, for me, protection is a big one because uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just want to be protected, right? All, all the time. Another one is kind of like clarity. Um, and in that particular grid I showed you, the clear quartz is acting as an amplifier. But the center stone is, you know, prosperity stone. Citrine is also a protection stone, but it depends on what your intention is. Again, this is all spiritual stuff that, you know, some people don't believe and it's okay. Um, but your intention is prosperity, so you're using amplifier stones, which is the clear, the clear quartz. 
to help amplify that middle stone to be doing what you, you want it to do, bring you prosperity. Um, and in the olden days, the jewelers would put citrine in their in their money bags to bring more money. So it is it is known as a prosperity stone. I like it as um, protection. So, and it is one of those um, one of those things that um, uh, natural citrine cleanses other stones. It doesn't need to be cleansed, but your other stones do. And if you set a, a program or an assistance, you know, intention with them, then I would suggest you do uh, cleanse them and maybe once a week. Um, and sage it helps so many things in the house anyway, including you and everything else. Um, it's no problem to do that. That's my favorite way to cleanse. Um, well, so let's see. I want to pull a card because every time I want us to have a card pulled. Um, and this is this is not going to tell you about the stone but it's kind of our little spiritual gathering here. And it seems like they are just what we need to hear at the time, and, and they kind of tell you what it's some good stuff, usually. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, this is one of my favorites. Okay. This is Lepidolite. Some people call it Lepidolite. I'm trying to get the glare off of it so you can see it. Lepidolite. You can't see how to spell it. L-E-P-I-D-O. L-I-T-E. Whenever you hear light on a stone, it's usually spelled L-I-T-E. Um, Lepidolite is kind of mica. The, the, the original um, binding is found in, in slices of mica like this, but they do polish it and have polished pieces. Lepidolite has um, lithium in it, so it's very calming, and especially to children, but it's also good for grief and depression, things like that, because it calms everything down, right? Calming doesn't hurt anything. Let me go see what it says so we can hear the, the thought from the spiritual world on it. And again, I'm sorry for the, um, the technical difficulties, but I'm very glad to have you here. And I hope you come again. We're doing this on the fourth Tuesday of every month. I thought it was the last Tuesday, but this month had five, so it's the fourth. And it's from 6 to 6.30. Uh, again, reach out to me at A-N-G-S. That's my nickname, Ange. Ange's Crystal Corner at gmail.com. If you have questions, you're interested in purchasing, I'm in Tidewater, you're welcome to set an appointment and come look. Um, and I'm also do consultations and uh, can help you out. Okay, Lepidolite. Recall your dreams. Discover a new dimension of yourself by tapping into the power of the invisible dream world. There is so much information accessible to you within the symbols and storylines of your dreams. They offer a deeper method of understanding and self-reflection a way to expand beyond the physical realm and learn from your subconscious mind. Start by asking yourself a question before you go to bed and see if you can work out the answer in your dreams. When you awake, write down all the details you can recall. Making this a regular practice will allow you to access the subconscious information about yourself. Well, I don't really write my dreams much, but I, I can say that I will go to sleep and set the intention of, you know, God, please take all these troubles away from me. And I can do that on a problem a couple of nights in a row, and I will have a solution, usually, or I will at least have peace about it, because I'm giving it to God, and I don't have to hold on to it for the night. Um, so with that being said, I really appreciate you being here. I'm not sure how long we've gone for both videos now, but um, I really enjoy it. I hope you do, too, and we will um, come back next month with another crystal we will focus on. I think it's going to be Labradorite because it's one of my favorite stones, and I've been wanting to do that one, so I'm not sure about the subject matter yet, but we've got plenty to talk about. I could talk all year or, or longer on stones, so thank you and bless you, and I hope you have many blessings. Let's see if I can stop the video this time. Let's see.